Okay, so hello everyone. This is Akshay here and let us continue with the today's GFG Purity Dish Week. Today's question name is Bleak Numbers. It's a, it is a good question. It is based on one prerequisite that is the counting set between the number. And uh, this question will have two approaches. The first one is very naive, like the whatever the question is saying, you just do it. And second one is a bit observational. Okay, so let us continue now. So we have been given an integer. We need to check whether it is bleak or not. What a bleak is? If it cannot be represented as a sum of positive number x and the set bit count in that x. If it cannot be represented in this term, then definitely that particular number is a bleak number. Yep, something like that, right? So, let's see input and output, like 4 here, right? So, in the case of 4, ke case mein kya karna hai? we need to check if there is such a number x such that the count of set bit, if we do the summation, if it is equals to 4 not. If that's the case, then we need to return, uh, if that is the case, then we need to return 0, right? And if, the, if there is no such case possible, then we need to return 1, correct? Similarly, for 3, you can clearly see that for x equals to 2, the 2 plus count set bit of 2 will give you as 3, right? So this is a not a bleak number, which cannot be represented, right? So I hope you get the point, right? Is it bleak or not? That's not a concern. We just have to check if it is representable. If, if it is not representable, then you need to return 1. If it is representable, then you need to return 0. That's it, right? So method 1 is very simple. Yaar. Like, what they have said, they do it, right? We need to find x plus count set bit in x equals to 4. Now, this is the range that will range ki wo definitely greater than equals to 0. This is a positive number of count set bit x, right? And x. X would be also be in a positive number because its range is where? Constraint we have range is 1 to 10 power 9, right? So that means we have a number, let's say a plus b, which is equals to c, and all of these numbers are positive. So I can clearly say that if a, if a is greater than c, then there is no point of checking this condition, right? So that means this a should be less than equals to c if the condition has to equate, correct? अगर possible होता है तो a greater than c हो गया तो definitely हमारा answer नहीं मिलने वाला है right so हम यहाँ पे एक for loop run करेंगे for i equals to one till i less than equals to n and i plus plus right we are doing the same thing as asked by the question I will just say if i plus count set bit I am writing c as b count set bit in i if equals equals to n then that means you have found such case you need to return one right if that's not the case you need to return zero this would be our very um, proper or very small pseudocode, right? Now, this CSB, jo hai yaar, iske, if you talk about the inbuilt function, then in Java, you have integer.bit count. Integer.count bit or bit count, you can verify that. And if you talk in the C, then we have inbuilt function pop count, right? But I never encourage you guys to memorize these inbuilt functions when it is not necessary, right? We know how we can build the count set bit functions. I have explained this multiple times in my GFG purity history. So you can watch that video and can search in my GFG purity using the control F and you can see it. But yes, ignoring that thing that we already know how to find the CSB, this would be our pseudocode. And what is the time complexity this will take? So this will take the time complexity of n log n. Correct? How am I saying that this for loop will take O of n and this count set bit will take log n, right? So the overall time complexity would be n log n, right? And here the constraint is n, n is constraint given as 10 power 9. So if you do 10 power 9 into log of 10 power 9 base 2, then definitely it is much, much, much greater than 10 power 8. And that is why this code will give us the TLE. So this is one of the very mm, great or a standard approach to see which uh, method you should take on to proceed on in let's say when you are in online assessment right or in, or in doing CP great so that that is the thing so so we will not proceed ahead with this method one what is method two method two is a bit observational now you can pause this video here tie this code try the method one approach in your code and try to code it and you will get a TLE you must verify that right method two here is what we can say is we know that X plus the CSB of X is equals to the given number n, right? Can we define the range of X somehow? 
can we define the range of x somehow if i am able to get the range of this thing right now the csb the x is actually pointing to 1 to 10 power 9 x is actually belonging to 1 to 10 power 9 right so counting the csb in is that means we just need to find the log of 10 power 9 base 2 this would be the maximum number of set bit for a particular x in this range would have right log of 2 and q nikal rahe hain let's say aapke paas ek binary representation hai 100 this is nothing but 4 right and this is nothing but the last bit is 2 power 0 it is 2 power 1 this is 2 power 2 right if i do log 4 base 2 then definitely i'll be getting that what is the number of set bit count in this 4 so that is why i'm saying the largest number is 10 power 9 right so that is why i'm saying if you do log 10 power 9 base 2 whatever value you will get here so let us do that let us use an online calculator so if you do 10 power 9 log base 2 and if you calculate it to be 29.89 so that means in this range you will not have more than 29 set bit for any maximum number right this would be the maximum count of your set bit in this given range right so i know this has a range i know this has a range which is starting from 1 to 29 right can i comment on this x range now earlier i was using this x using a use i was using a for loop which i was going from 1 to 10 power 9 and that is why it was giving me o of n log n complexity n for the for loop and log n for the csb right but now can i say something on this range x range yep i can say now this is fixed and this is fixed so what is the range of x now so if i take the maximum number here that is n minus 29 right so if i take so x i can say will belong to n minus 29 till n minus 1 right this would be the range of x so i will use a for loop to just iterate in this range in this range correct and i'll just check that if for this range for let's say i equals to n minus 29 i should be less than equals to n and i plus plus correct i will just check if i plus csb of i equals equals to n then i will just say return one and after that for loop i'll just say return zero yep and what is the time capacity for this for loop now you can clearly see the range the range itself we have got from the log of 10 per 9 plus 2 so definitely if i write it in terms of n so this is nothing but log n right and and we are iterating log n times so it would be log n right and since the csb thing it will take log n again right so the overall time capacity would be now here log n into log n and if you put on the 10 power 9 constraint here it would be definitely less than 10 power 8 and that is why this code should work right okay so one last thing you need to find how you can find the uh, count set bits if you are not relying on the inbuilt function let me tell you once again in a very brief manner so let's say you have one one zero one right so what i'm saying is i need to re uh, refrain the last bit as it is so what i'm doing that i'll just and with one the rest of the bits will be zero right and since i'm doing and and since i just and with one so this all zeros would be making all of the left part except the last bit it will make zero by default right and here it is one so this the answer here will not be will be dependent on what this last bit is here for the n right because this is already one if this would have been zero then zero would have been here but this is one so i will just say one right now i will say n equals to n by 2 or you can let's or you can say n right shift right shift 2 right both both mean same right so what are, what will be your binary representation now so you have 110 one, and again you will do and with one this zero will make all the bits except the last bit as zero and this since we are doing it and so the same thing would be copied here right again we will do n by 2 and they will keep on going it right so if you do n by 2 again it will be 1 and 1 ending with 1 0 this will again except the last bit will make all zeros and this one will be copied here right again since this is a uh, not n is still greater than 0 so i will again do n by 2 and only the one bit will be remained and 1 and 1 which gives you 1 right and i will just maintain a count variable right whenever i am doing i will say count plus equals to n and 1 and i will just say n equals to n by 2 this will be running under a while loop while n greater than 0 right i have explained you much more things now and i think it would be an easy question for you
right? So please try to code this pseudo code in your code editor and then we can proceed ahead with the compilation and the submission results. Okay, so for the safer side, I'm, I have just taken 30 because it was 29.89, right? So for the safer side, I have just taken 30, right? Okay, you, you could have taken 32 as well, but we 30 threshold to put the constraint at 10.9, the maximum set would, would be equals to the 29.89, but taking a round of value, let's say 30. And I'm just checking if I plus count set bits of I equals to n return 0, else return 1, and this is basically a very uh, small function, a very helper, or let's say a very small function of finding, counting the set bits, which we have seen multiple times in our GFG registry. Let's just hit the submit button because we know this time the constraint will not create a problem and the overall iteration would be less than 10 per 8. And yes, we have done this question. That's great. This was a good question, I believe. I I'll say, right? You have the C++ code now. Let's just hit the submit button for this code as well. I hope I have not made any mistakes in syntax. Okay, great. Now, you can get all the source code in my DSL repository. I'll mention the link in the DSL repository. And if you have still not yet subscribed, please like, share, and subscribe so that I can be motivated to make <coughs> to continue this streak. I don't know, till eternity or till the day of my life. Okay, I'll see you in the next streak. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. Bye-bye and take care, guys.